Get out. Maybe the turbo will fix that. I might have like. Now I'm here. You see it with me. My left leg getting PTSD and sh. Uh, get out. Dude, it even says dirty on the dirty tank. <laughs> Dude. Yo. We. What is this? What is this unholy thing? Just need to go test drive it now. Yeah. My, what the fuck is happening to my hand? You know? Wow. I can actually like feel that the car is like shit. So here we go, taking apart um, seats that have sat on my shelf around uh, eight to ten months now, maybe close. Maybe around that, yeah. Since um, I got rid of this Silver Stubby, unfortunately, due to my idiotness. But um, yeah, now we are recycling them, putting these seats to use, and hopefully we keep giving them life by putting them in, in another car. Um, they say these seats are actually kind of special to me. Um, they've been in pretty much every car I've owned except my first car, so three out of four cars, and I I like them. They're comfortable, and that's why I want to keep them. So I'm going to fix them, and we're going to put them in the BMW. So I've taken the majority of the seat apart. As you can see here, someone's already been in here before us and um, done some little weldies, whatever, the, whatever those are, boogers. Not very really welds, in my opinion. But this was positioned reasonably where it was... Um, comfortable essentially and um I'm gonna reuse it fix it because otherwise we can't use the seat really because um it's this is the bottom pad the butt pad so um yeah those are two other bolt hole spots and they've ripped through gotta reinforce those most stuff in the bucket ready for hydrochloric acid dipping gotta clean these up for the most part there's no rust on them they're fine just going to replace these um, end feet with um, ones that fit the Beamer. Um, and it should fit, I think. I think, I'm not 100% sure. I haven't done this before, but that's all right. So everything was crusty and dusty and needed to be taken apart. And that's what I'm doing here, basically just getting everything apart that I can. So I've cleaned up the rails. Um, basically going to remove the feet that um, secure the seat to the chassis. I'm pretty sure it's just one little rib nut thingo and a weld for most of them. Um, I don't think it'll be too hard and um, I'm sure we can um, figure something out with it. So yeah, let's do it. All the stuff that maybe looks a little too complicated for me, I'm leaving together and the stuff that I can't literally take apart because I think it's factory assembled thing. Um, so yeah, we're just Playing it by eye and gonna try and puzzle our way through this. So my dudes, took a little while. It's late now, it's dark, but we got all of the brackets. Can't even see the light go. We got all the brackets drilled off. Um, they had a spot weld and they had a weird little rib nut welded thingy. Um, to be honest with you, it was really easy to um, drill, and so new method basically. I'm copying what the OEM manufacturers did. Only difference is I'm using um, a higher tensile um, nut and bolt instead of the weird little nut and bolt they had. Plus, I'll be doing a spot weld again. And as for these ones, they had here. They had a weld at that. Um, far right at the far top point and they had a weld here I'm gonna copy them again once again if I can along with the um, little rib nut 
thingy and the spot weld, but instead of the rib nut thingy, using a tensile bolt and nut instead. Um, so yeah, basically going to try and mimic together a bracket to fit the 36, really. Um, yeah. So my dudes. Unfortunately for our chair, we can get rid of this now as well. Fortunately for our chair, she's a 25 year old chair. She's seen some abuse from um, some large people, it seems, in the past, and has had a jockey job done, as also shown here by the whole thing not being attached except for one weld, like there. Um, we are fabricating reinforcements for the chair. Why? Why are we going to this effort? Chairs are comfortable. I like them. They're pretty comfortable. I like them really. Um, second reason, bucket seats are expensive. And so are brackets for E36s. Um, so I am fabricating what I can to make what I want. A nice, comfortable chair in the E36. Because current stock one is splitting the leather seams and stuff as well as um it's just kind of mediocre and this other seat it's a bucket seat style and it is unbelievably comfortable considering it's a factory oem seat while this one is regular old um yeah pretty clean seats though but regardless still hunger shit compared to these once they're nice and new again um but i have to somehow Obviously clean everything, get a lot of the non-mechanical parts painted. Um, I won't be doing a lot of the springs and little weird um, spots that do rotate since the paint will just get rubbed off there anyway. Um, basically the plan is to um, give a life to these seats again. The main parts, all the rust and stuff, it's pretty thick heavy surface rust. However, they're all mechanically and structurally sound. This on the other hand, the rust was... Um, a little bit too aggressive um so i'm fixing them and i'm going to be laying edge primer and i'm going to be laying um a painter coat over both of these bucket seat things that take the foam um and luckily first time i've been able to find this um where i am because online it's not really available it's kind of hard to find um etch and weld through primer very hard to find where i am for some weird odd reason Funnily enough, local little store had a, um, sells it on the shelf, off the shelf then and there, which is really nice. So support your local shops, people, um, because, I mean, well, in my opinion, they do a bit of a job of, better job than some of these big companies, um, and really just to keep them in business. But yeah, let's get into this. So once again, the idea was I wanted uh, basically cheap bucket seats and to do this, I needed to fix these brackets. They're pretty bad. Um, and I'm intending that uh, these seats will stay in the car for a long time, which is why I'm putting so much effort into it because I want these seats um, to stay in there probably until I need a better seat set up, which might be in a four or five years. So I, I wanted it to last a good, good time. So my dudes... Going over with a drill and wire wheel brush and getting a lot of the um, surface rust off. I'll be going over it with a rag with um, acetone as well to clean it up. I haven't cleaned these up yet, but um, clean these up reasonably and they've come up nicely. They'll do fine with just a coat of primer and um, black on them. Should, should solve a lot of this rusting that uh, we're seeing, I think. Um, the idea here was to try and get this reinforcement plate to spread the load over um, more surface area, thus um, using more of the bucket itself to take uh, the tension. While the previous welds and everything, they were okay for short-term use, not very much for abuse and use, 200,000, 300,000 kilometer use. And so um, I basically ensured that now. And so with the stock reinforcement plates that came on these buckets, I've gone ahead and um, put more weld on them or welded the entire surrounding of them um, to ensure that there's no unnecessary silly movement because stuff wasn't correctly done 
beginning, essentially, because um, that's the idea, I think, um, is I want to do stuff correctly, or as good well as I can, at least, as best of my ability as I can, from the very beginning. So my dudes, after a lot of welding, grinding, and stuff, well, they haven't been finished yet to, um, to paint, I just need to grind them, grind some bad spots down that I welded, you know, just adding in reinforcement plates, welding current reinforcement plates, um, a little bit extra, and welding some possible spot weld spots I thought would be good, as well as adding reinforcement plates, more reinforcement plates, um, the driver's side here was superbly reinforced um, due to the fact that um, it already had broken these two. It pulled the sheet metal away. Um, it didn't look like it was caused from rust, surprisingly. It looked like a lot of the tears were just from constant um, stretching and bouncing back. So it just got stretched and got thinner, stretched and got thinner, stretched and got thinner until it finally snapped. Um, I'm planning to reduce that, luckily. These reinforcement plates already came from the factory. They're spot welded in, I think, three spots or maybe four spots. Um, but I just went ahead and just welded all of that. Just to, I want a nice tight seat to sit on, to be, to be honest. Um, that side, I forgot um, reinforcement plates um, before I started cleaning, but it's alright. Just welded them on and clean it up. Alright, so we are taking the seats out now of the Beamer. Pretty straightforward, a little bit stupid though in terms of the design they've done, but I don't care who gives a f um, because I'm fixing it and making it better. So this is where you sit in the car. I'm about to put the cushion on top of, on top of this as well. I don't think I'll need the, um, what should I call it? The top piece, because it's, um, but it's, the, it's not as wide as the bottom piece for the most part. It's just as wide, if not, um, the top of the seat is a little bit wider though, which is fine. However, for these BMW seats, um, for the seat belt, that is um, a cockamamic situation, they have attached the seat belt to the rail of the seat itself. Um, nothing I can't handle. Basically, um, to mount our seat belts to our, we're going to do the same of what BMW have done and mount the seat belt to the um, seat bracket itself. So I'll have to figure out a little inju a little thing for that. Um, basically, hopefully, drill a hole into the bracket I make um, for the uh, for the seat um, and bolt it the same as they've bolted to here, very similar, or at least try to get it close. Um, so yeah, it's just a matter of taking this bolt out on both sides, and um, that should come out. So BMW are cuck lords and don't have all bags, airbags turned on all the time. They have occupancy sensors in these things. So I just took it out. Um, it wasn't too hard. It actually, um, I took it, the seat apart more than necessary. I did break a few clips on it, but what do you expect? These things are coming close to 30 years old. Um, I did try and be careful, but really honestly, replace as much hardware with metal hardware as you can, because at least it better last. So basically this is the occupancy sensor. Now, to be fair with you, I do not have much of an idea if this will um, continue to occupancy sensor myself, but as long as the circuit is active and good um, and it's showing no codes, um, I'm pretty happy. Because, um, I mean, the idea is, well, Hopefully, I just, when I finish um, painting um, this and everything, well, this is good again. So I'll put this to the side for now. Be careful with it. Sensitive little thing. Put that side down, foil side down. It even says on the logo here. Um, so for now, that is going to stay there for four. Haven't unbolted the driver's side yet because... Um, I might need to drive the car, so I mean I'm just doing the passenger side, and you know getting my head wrapped around it, etc. etc. So yeah, um, I don't really know what to do next to be honest. Um, I'll figure that out. <laughs> I'm a little bit busted. So my dudes, 
This is the driver side. We are currently working on the passenger side. They are done as for primer. Um, I'm reasonably happy with the results. They're not perfect. Um, there are there are a few boogers. There are a few decent welds. It was harder to get decent welds on um, this material since it was like 0.5 thick. It was really thin. So to keep a puddle going was extremely hard. Um, I'd often blow a hole in the material, and so well, ended up being a little ugly. But it's not like you're gonna see it anyway. Um, and I'm happy with all the reinforcements I'm, I've done. Only this and the bucket for the other one needed reinforcements. As for all the accessory stuff, um, I've just gone ahead, cleaned it up, and painted it for um, prevention of rust sake. And yeah, basically, I'm gonna put this together now, really. It's um, dry, so it's good. Um, but once we put it together, we also have to, have to test fit the um, occupancy sensor that BMW puts on their seats. Um, and, I, and we're going to put it on the underneath and see where um, there are any hard bends and curves. Because the last thing we want is to damage that sensor. So we need to, any welds or any hard bends, just grind down a little bit, smooth it out. So that um, it's not as ab abrasive or harsh on the sensor curving over and doing its thing. Because the BMW one is much more flatter. So I just want to make sure I don't damage it. Um, I have double checked, I haven't damaged it. I took it for a drive to pick up some things, etc. It was about two to three hour um, driving around total. There was no um, passenger seat problems. Um, how I did it to test if it was still all right was I literally just plugged it back in and put it there. Foil down, it asked for foil down. So foil down, but um, that seems good. Damage sensor is not damaged, which I'm happy about, so I can reuse it. I was careful to take it off. You just very slowly peel it off. I'll show you on the next, on the driver's side seat when I do it. But yeah, let's um, put this thing together and see how it fits. It's a little tight when I put the driver's side and the passenger side, but I think it's a slightly different um, size ratio or whatever. I don't know, it's slightly different size maybe, I don't know. But um, that is a really snug fit on this side. This obviously will not fit on this side. This, well, let's find out, it's gonna be tight. I don't know how people fit bucket seats on these cars. Everything's so tight with the trim and shit, it's ridiculous. So my dudes, I haven't really been filming too much of what I've been doing because there was just a lot of fiddling around and shit. But I had to grab, I test fitted the Subaru seatbelt and see, to see if it would fit on the Beamer. Unfortunately, it did not, doesn't like it. So I'm custom retrofitting this seatbelt to obviously the rail, etc, etc. I've trimmed the trim, um, probably could have gone a little less on the trimming, but it fits nicely, nice little trim to finish that off. As for how Subaru does their seatbelt bolts, because this is a Subaru chair, remember? Um, I'll show you. In their tabs, they have a little notch. So obviously, if you have an impact, it can't go forward or back, etc. So essentially, I'm just copying um, the idea. However, I'm doing it in a different method. I'm going to try and tap that out to M8, um, an M8 1.25. If not, I'll try and put a, um, a nut on the other side to take... Um, the the bolt um and essentially what will that will stop happening was so let's say you've got an impact this is going to go forward because you're going to go forward belt's going to go forward um basically um this should stop it from going forward there's a little bit of wiggle room to go down which means this would be going back which would be a bit weird but for the most part you've got the chair to support you going back so i mean yeah um that's kind of how i'm doing it here um may not be the best solution but it's the best i've been able to come up with so i mean yes um yeah it's pretty much ready to go on the car i think yeah it is other side trim is on to get clearances and stuff and um yeah well oh and bmw has a really funny spring tension system so they like their springs for their seat belt slightly tensioned so i found the hole and now it's slightly tensioned and um, I did test it 
without it being tensioned and it does still click into the seat belt. I'm not exactly sure what it does, so I'm just following what BMW has done with it um, to try and keep it as OE spec close and safe as possible. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Time to test fit the bloody thing. Haven't done the driver side yet because I still need to drive the car to places, etc. So I'm doing all the hard shit on the passenger side. Then I'm gonna have an idea and I have a good um, grasp of it and I'll do it to the driver's side as well. Hallelujah, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Okay, bad news. There is literally no room to move side to side, as in there's no room to adjust the seat left, there's no room to adjust the seat right. I didn't actually check this before. Oh my god, there's, there's literally no room. But hey, the rails line up pretty well. Oh, you can't even see on the camera. It's pretty close. So it's just a matter of um, making a little plate and doing what Subaru did and welding and putting a little weird nut thing in it. I might just weld the bracket on only. Um, get some thick, I've got thick 5 mil plate that I can weld to the rails. Um, yeah, it's a little bit um, scary because... <laughs> The thing barely fits. It barely, well not barely fits, it actually went in there quite snug. But it's really snug, as in like it's tight. But it's a good tight. It's a good tight. Um, yeah. BMW has their seatbelt um, going to the chair. Now, that, this is easily doable. Um, I will have to make a slot in the um in the trim and i will have to make a hole to take this um m8 by 1.25 nut that's all i've given you so i'm assuming it's nothing that nothing that takes too much load just um obviously a regular um automotive grade tensile m8 1.25 bolt and i'll put a um actually what i could do is I can make the um, bracket, as in the chassis bracket, have a little tab come off it to take this actually. That might be a better option. However, if I do that, it might be super weird and it may not um, fit right the seatbelt. So I'm gonna have to do a bit of a Google in with that. But yeah, no, it looks good in here. It does need to clean. Um, these seats are bloody 25 years old. Never cleaned them. Kind of gave them a vacuum once, but they've got lots of um, lots of human ass grease on them. So yes, need to be cleaned. You know what my dudes? So the idea for the seat seat belt, I've, really just, I've just loosely put it back on to get an idea of fitment, etc. So obviously the seat belt will come around this shoulder bend here, and then the actual um, bracket will bolt down to the bracket that we make down here for the chassis mount. Um, so yeah, I think that's a, just a straightforward, simple solution. Um, the car itself does not um, want to let the seat move side to side at all. There we go, fabricating our seat mounts, our actual seat mounts that go to the chassis rail. I ended up deciding to go with um, two and a half inch by 25 by 25 tube and five mil plate weld onto our frame rails for our seat because Essentially, I wasn't able to copy Subaru in the Rivnut and thingy design, so I just full on went out and welded some thick material on. Um, I just wanted them to be some nice, strong seats. And hell, I'm not like adding weight BMW seats like 25 kilos, 30 kilos. These Subaru seats like 15 kilos, they're pretty light. I regret um, having the carpet on, however. I kind of didn't want to do this just um, out the carpet because I would have needed the carpet for um, so yeah, it was kind of a weird call to make. It's like they won't quite fit without the carpet. They won't quite fit if you do. Hey Daisy. Here you go. Cute 
So call me uh, suspicious or whatever. So, so, what's the, whatever the word is. What, what is the word? Superstitious. Superstitious. But I've taken the seat out. Well, you can't see a reflection. But I've taken the seat out and I'm about to weld up the brackets fully. And there's a butterfly on my car. Its wings are closed at the moment. Um, but it's there. Yeah, no, it was a little bit. It was its wings are pretty. But that's a little bit of an omen. I, I don't know. Maybe that's how I feel um, for what I've got planned for this car. So yeah. No, that's pretty cool. All right. Let's weld this. Let's go. Cool, cool. There you go. We we'll see now. So my dudes, fitted the chair, welded everything, so I tacked all the brackets, and then I um, took it out, then I welded a lot of it, then I put it back in to test fit, fits perfectly. So here is the result of a lot of my welding. I'd say pretty good for the most part. That little point at the top is probably not as good as I'd like it to be little balls there it annoys me it needs to be perfect um, so I had to do slots in these outside ones so basically um, in the car itself the front of this seat gets welded to um, what should we call it um, it goes on studs then the rear goes with bolts so you got to, because uh, of how tight the fit is with this chair and everything, um, you got to put the bolts in at the back about halfway. Then I've made it so you can slot it in, and then the front will just drops onto the studs that way. Um, so yeah, no, it fit nicely, nice and snug. It's good. Um, yeah, and I added the seatbelt bracket. So the, basically the end of the seatbelt bolts onto there for... Um, uh, because BMW doesn't, in this um, chassis at least, doesn't put their um, seat belt bracket on the chassis, they put it on the seat. So I needed to get a die grinder and just clean that up a little bit so the seat belt bracket can sit nicely and flush on there. Um, and yeah, really that's about it. It's pretty, pretty cool, yo. Tacked it in the car, welded it out here, double checked fitment, fitment all good in the hood, bro. These are how the welds turned out. The little butt joints were a little bit uglier than I wanted them to be, but overall, on a lot of it, whoops, sorry, a lot of them, I'm reasonably happy with how they turned out. Um, Worldwise, pretty, pretty good, I'd say, and will definitely hold the seat and me in place. Shouldn't budge at all. And if, because this plate is five mil. It'd take a lot of force to bend this 5 mil plate, so, you know, I'm not... If if, it, if something ends up bending that 5 mil plate, well, then there's bigger issues than these 5 mil plates bending, to be honest. Oh, my God, I'm not used to close-up with this camera. It's all right. But, yeah, that's for the seat bracket. Sorry, the seat belt bracket. Do need to clean out the inside of the tubes as they were gal, but they were thicker than the other stuff I had. So I was like, I want thicker, I want to be safe. So I need to clean out the inside of them. Shouldn't be too hard, a little wire brush should be fine. Um, and yeah, now it's just time to disassemble it. And the plan is to send the cushions to an upholstery place, get them basically relined because a lot of it's loose and really bumpy and weird and shit. Some of them have a few holes. Some of the, because I've swapped the passenger and driver cushion um, on the bottom, bum cushion. Some of them don't fit too well. I've, this is, I've, this cushion I'm planning to put in the passenger side. That's why I put a little hole there for the bolt. Um, they don't fit too well. So I'm hoping the upholster can basically get them to fit a little nicer. And yeah, um, getting close, getting close. Basically, pull them apart, clean up everything, paint the little bucket thing, send cushions and bucket thing to upholstery, and then paint, um, the rest of 
the seat mechanisms, etc. So yeah. Hey my dude, so finally everything has dried in the ghetto booth for what's it been, last three or four days now, four days. Um, it's all good in the hood in terms of I'm happy with most of the paintwork, except there's a few little spots because of the light in the ghetto booth. Can't really, uh, because of the light in the ghetto booth, we weren't able to get, what is that? What is that weird sludge in this thing? What is that? I don't know. But regardless, it wasn't the easiest to get um, everything 100% painted because I couldn't see, obviously. I did, this was like something probably at the top or whoops, at the top or the bottom of the string or whatever because I hang everything up, hung everything up. Um, but yeah, probably there's just a few little imperfections like that in terms of the paint. But hey, it's a lot better than before when it was all rusty and disgusting and stuff. Um, unfortunately, like, you know, I can't take whole assembly apart simply because I don't think it comes apart it's like goes in and together but then you just you just can't take it apart before it gets stuck so unfortunately obviously there's still a few rust spots and stuff and weird paint spots um but for the most part I'm pretty happy with the result and you know um, the idea was basically to make some seats last a lot longer so I'm happy with that um, and now it's really time to just put these things back together before I get the seat covers back so yeah let's do that yeah, in the confines of my living space, but it doesn't matter. We bought a new Coolio Tulio. It's basically an upholstery and carpet and like couch cleaner that uses water. It doesn't steam it. It just sprays a little bit. It just sprays water on it, and you basically suck the water back up. And so far, it's been doing a good job. You can't really see. But maybe you can light. We already got some brown sludgy water. It's lovely. Makes um the stomach turn for certain for certain types of people, that's for sure. However, I love this tool already and it's gonna clean up the arse grease of our three hundred thousand kilometer seats. Um just like the beam one. That's a bit funny. The beam is also pretty close to four hundred thousand, but these seats may have seen more abuse than that as well. Um, they may have, may have not, I don't know. They definitely need clean though with, um, more than a cloth because when I was clothing it, it was pretty disgusting. Yellow water just on the surface cloth, it, cloth itself. And as it's turning out, we have a dispatch water we need to clean. So let's clean. Not gonna lie, this cool little machine that I got, um, it's from a, like a, like an Australian shop, like wide shop, super cheap water. I don't know if you may have heard of it or not. Um. Not gonna really promote the brand or whatever, I'm not sponsored by them. So now we are washing the ass cheek cushion. This is gonna be worse, I think. So let's find out. So my dudes, we are emptying the juice of death. You are about to see how filthy this really is. Get out. Oh, oh. oh moly. So disgusting. So my dudes. We are attempting to clean this gunk today. On camera, it doesn't look as bad. I'm not sure if that's like the color or whatever. But yeah, there were, when I took the seats out, there was a bit of mold and I did try and clean it up with a cloth and some kind of antibacterial spray. However, um, I don't think it's done a good enough job. So we're gonna give our little vacuum cleaner thing as you go a good shot in here. As well, we're going to do it on the driver's side. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty excited about getting this kind of nice and 
spotless. Obviously, I did ruin the carpet a little bit with welding, but hey, I didn't want to pull the whole carpet for the seats. That would have made it a lot longer. So, um, yeah, let's get into it. So, basically, with this uh, vacuum and stuff, um, I went over it uh, about four times each side um, for underneath the chair, and I was still getting brown water out. Like, it was just absolutely chockers. It's a lot better than what it was before. A lot cleaner. Got most of the um, stains out on camera. It's a little weird, um, the colour, but it's right. Um, now I've got a lot of the stains out on both sides. Done a third pass in terms of with our little vacuum thing over Jigo. Now I'll just show you the colour. Colour is nasty. It is nasty, boy. Oh, nasty. Need to put you on my knee for the time being. Oh, how do I put you somewhere? You can sit on my knee. Yummy. Good shit. Flamingo socks. Oh wait, they're two can socks. But the seats in. It is good in the hood. Seatbelt works. Show you how I mounted the seatbelt from factory compared to BMW. Oh. Sorry, you can't really see it. This seatbelt's in the way. But everything's in the way. Can you see? No, you can barely see it because it's so far back. I don't really want to move the chair. It's so hard. To, well, it's not hard to move the chair on the um, closer to the front, but once you get um, further back in terms of chair movement it starts colliding with this pillow trim and it's pretty hard to move it's very tight um as well as another thing i'm not too keen on is when you sit in the car obviously this is a common thing with bmws it's really hard to um get like a centered seat with the steering wheel because the tendency with bucket seats is that um they're wider and require more space and you can't tell on camera i'll try and but it's to the left more. It's hard to tell because of the camera. Wait, wait. Camera is... Where's camera? I'll give you like there. Like you're sitting... My eyesight is like kind of like there. It's a bit too far to the left for me. As you can see. I've got more space on the right with my right leg. My left leg is still pretty close. Like we've still got... we still got... We're pretty close. Like we're kind of as close as we can be because this... um seatbelt from BMW is touching the carpet there. Um, this is about as close as we can go. And in terms of how straight the chair is, it's reasonably straight. It's probably a touch to the right. Like down, this this side is poking more that way. This side's poking more this way. Um, I mean, I can't really expect too much because it was my first time fitting a seat. And I suppose now I have a bit of experience. Um, but overall, I'm pretty happy with how CT CT mix CT, so yes, let's get to installing that one. Let's go. That's how the bottom of the seat turned out. Be happy overall. Now we just need to fit the top section and the trim and the trim on this side. We're good to go. There's also trim this here for the seat belt, unfortunately. As um well, I want a seatbelt to um fit and work. Basically, in line with this trim line here. Voila. I got it. Okay, now took longer than needed, but it's all right. So I went over the seats again once installed with the um.
cleaner thing I and it got it got even more gunk out uh, not nice but surprising how much gunk are in these seats I mean I shouldn't be surprised they're like three they've probably got 300,000 K's roughly on them maybe more but um I'm pretty happy with the result suits are nicely except I'll show you above here see seat is not quite centered with the steering wheel as you can see from the mark from the steering wheel it's a little bit off but it's um that's one of the unfortunate thing about these chassis is the you know it being too far right and you don't have enough room to go in so it is what it is um but yeah i'm pretty happy with the result just need to go test drive it now about 80 to 90 centimeters I believe um, for the length of the J pipe um, yeah she's a little she's a little rough no seat bag light which means the sensor underneath there is working I put the seat occupancy sensor all the way underneath um, not all the way underneath but you know underneath the cushion on top of um, some that blue foam I was cutting out earlier and I'm pretty happy so, idle, she's kind of happy at idle on the outside, inside it sounds droney for sure, she is for sure, I probably shouldn't have parked in mud with an open diff, but hey, it's done now, um, yeah, that is really it in terms of seating stuff, oh yeah, no, I'll walk through you guys a little bit, I think so off, but stock kind of mounting, kind of style on the front with the studs you can't really see it you won't be able to see it but on the back i had in order to install these seats you've got to like well i don't know you can see them no you won't be able to see them but you got to like slide them in to um get them to work uh, otherwise you've got to like, basically you got to slide them in and then drop the front down onto the studs um because how i've designed the mounts is a little bit tricky and like Everything's really close, so it's hard. But um, yeah. So if you guys haven't really seen the Beamer before, walk around to the car. Obviously, genuine wheels, of course, they get lucky to get those. I actually didn't know much about them. Peep a shit back here, doesn't matter. But the most important thing about these. Guess. Just before I open this, guess. Guess how many tools are still here. Pretty much every single one. This is a walking nut thing, but yes. That's the most valuable thing on the car. More so than the wheels. But obviously two and a half liter stock engine that came with the car, stock transmission that came with the car. If I can get to the body thing, there we go. Get rag, obviously these shoe boxes. A little bit of tick still. Need to fix that. Um, unfortunately, M52, but it is a single panel, so that's preferable. Um, it's mainly stock, but that won't be the case so soon, hopefully. So this thing has the chassis has got close to 400,000. So is the engine sitting up there, 380,000 k's. Paint is rough. She needs a repaint. 
Angel Lights are dog shit. Normal bumper. They've got fog light covers though. Um, and yeah, that's about it. See, it's a pog. And um, yeah, got a lot of work to do with this thing. If um, we want to make it our daily drifter. So yeah. Main thing is also um, with these seats. This, um, you may be kind of wondering why I took all the effort to put them in. Um, they've been in every single car I've owned now, pretty much, except for one. Um, and so they are kind of special to me. Um, and they're super comfortable. I love them. Like the early style GC8 um, Subaru bucket seats that go in the WXs most of the time. This fly is super annoying. Oh, um, they're probably the most comfortable seat out of all of them, I think. steering wheel I might want to get something a little further that way you know because it's a little bit far away at the moment with the seat and yeah that's just me though but yeah you can just see the vibration of the car it's harder to see on camera but Vibrating, vibrating, and that's like the stock mountain. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, basically, if you want to run down in terms of kind of my style on this channel, my garage, you know, or a man's garage, everyone's everyone's garage, I think. Um, I don't like to waste stuff. These were sitting off in the mezzanine. I really don't like to waste stuff, and so pretty much everything I do try and reuse, recycle, and um, you know, trying to make use out of it because. Um, I don't like waste. I like reusing. I like making nice and new again. And um, that's the point of this car. This thing is crapped out of its asshole. And let's make it cool and nice and new again. So let's do it. Before we get um, cracking on fixing this crapped out piece of hunk behind me, basically what we're going to be doing is setting up the rest of the workshop, finishing the workshop. Uh, that means finishing the welding table, finishing the cutting table, both the wood and metal. Um, as well as finishing, um, we're done for racks pretty much. We just basically need pegboards now. Um, plumbing, electrical, and that's about it. So, see you guys in the next episode. Get ready for some awesome shit. I hope.